Hello. Me, hello. How are you? <laughs> I love me too. <laughs> what, 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 what? I what? love me too. I love me forever. Hola, Chiki. It's good to hear your voice. It's good to see you again. Nice, nice. Imagine I'm in Turkey. I'm taking this phone call from Turkey. All right. I hope you are blaring the station all over the hotel or wherever you're at. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's so funny. Someone came up to me and asked me, Sorry, which language is this? And I was like, That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, so because I love me, I'm going to get in touch with you independently and send you money. Okay. Come with a nice target shoot for me. Sour, sour. Yes, Emma, please be in your best behavior. Love after the what? link. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, this is the breakfast jam, and this is your man, Drew. And I think you remember me to look up a moja pale station in Guinea, okay, dance, dance, as a buoy. Of course, yeah. you know, Myra. Yeah. Yes, yes, she's done. We are most polite to all the time, every day. <laughs> Too polite, <laughs> yes. actually. <laughs> You yeah. better be. Like the people that sign your check. Yes, yeah, exactly. pretty much. And then we do have Emma, the girl with the velvet voice. You know her as well and her products as Emma's brush. Yes, sir. So, I love me. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've been... I mean, I love how you introed it. I love how you introed it. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize that. A lot when people think of two things, wellness, they think, rah, let me sweat, blah, blah, blah. They forget yeah. the very important side, mm -hmm. which is just how you feel, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I, I kind of feel like everyone deserves to walk in this world mm -hmm. with self-love yeah. um, and movement and mental health and all Also, when people think dance, mm. the amount of people that come up to me and said, but I can't dance. Yeah, but if you couldn't do maths, yeah. so you'd go to maths school. Yeah, it's yeah. an opportunity for you to just come, have fun, zero judgment. Not everyone has to be the best dancer. It's more just about creating spaces where everyone can come together, mm -hmm. vibe it out, have a good sweat, and just leave truly being able to say, I love me. And I always believe if you can walk or bop your head, you can surely dance. Yeah, I mean, what is dancing, really? It's only moving in rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so even mm -hmm. if you even if you can't walk, there are many people who have physical disabilities who yeah. can also dance, you know? Yeah, so also, it's just yeah. really just moving in with them. Yeah. So uh, what was the genesis of this? And, and uh, what brought you to start the movement I Love Me uh, from the very beginning? As um, alone in a corner or on a beach or you're just picking stories with someone and what was that moment, the aha moment that down for you to get I Love Me going? Um, it wasn't necessarily a aha moment. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time with dancers in the dance industry and I spend a lot of time with fitness instructors. Mm -hmm. So one thing that's always really kind of like aggravated me mm -hmm. is how fitness instructors kind of put their fitness above dancers. Yeah, so yeah. I always challenge like fitness instructors to come and dance with me for an hour and anyone mm. who has and I'm not going to drop names but some of the biggest in industry here mm. Mm. have left dead or quit halfway through simply mm. because dance is a really good quality um, exercise but because it's fun mm. people kind of remove the goodness from it yeah. so it kind of irritated me that there's this psychology around dance that is kind of a weak people's workout which is just not the case so that was something I wanted to fix um, by bringing a lot of people together. The only way you fix that is by encouraging people to do it so mm -hmm. that they can kind of figure it out themselves. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is, as dancers, very often we are used almost like props for exactly. musicians <laughs> or hype people. Yeah. And I wanted to say square. Or and curtain I love how raisers. You, like, uh, mm. Or curtain raisers, exactly. And I mm. love how you announce the artists because that's really what they are. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted them to be the main attraction. Yeah. So you come, Ayoma is just as exciting to see as any other musician. Trust me, mm. see her once, you're never going to forget it. Mm -hmm. Same right. is true of all other people that we have on our lineup. So I also wanted to give them the respect and the celebration that I feel that they truly deserve mm. by being the act. Love it, love it. So yes, um, I think it's just those. I love it. So um, the other aspect about um, I love me too is also the aspect that you're bringing in, which is um, mental health. Yes. 
Mm. Now, could you tell us a little bit about that? Because, um, of course, there's a, it's a lot of, that people look forward to, you know, talking about right now. There are a lot of platforms that I try to advocate for it, but it's never been through, you know, expression, dance, um, especially in a, on, in a big space like this. What brought you to do I Love Me Too in the, with, and bring focus to mental health? So everything that I do always has a, a mental health connotation such thing right. of, of there's no such thing of health without mental wellness there really isn't so mm. I think what a lot of people get confused about there's mental ill health and there are men, there's mental health those are two very different things mental ill health overwhelmingly is a biological disorder so you're talking about bipolar schizophrenia um, mm. chronic depression things that require a, bio, a biological support medication mm. something like that mm. then there's mental health mental wellness which we all engage in because all of us have um a mind so all of us require that mind to be healthy yeah. and there are moments in the same way with physical health where we might have a cold sometimes where we might have um just fatigue sometimes our mind goes through the same thing we might be a bit low sometimes we might be a bit anxious sometimes we might be a bit stressed sometimes mm -hmm. so what i've always advocated for is creating spaces where when we talk about fitness when we talk about dance when we talk about having fun i mean even when we talk about going out clubbing and drinking yeah. why do we do those things mm. normally we go out to feel better normally we dance to feel better and removing the idea that um fitness is about having a six pack or body goals which i'm completely against mm. um and making sure that there is front and center that it's about loving yourself it's about feeling amazing it's about um, leaving a day feeling like a happier, healthier version of you and you can't do that unless you feel good within yourself. Exactly. Right. I love it. So um, I don't have a question. I just uh, want to commend you, actually, because a lot of us have a lot of insecurities that we sort of not talk about and we shy away from mm -hmm. it. And this is such a beautiful platform for for anyone with any form of insecurity to come and just unleash. So I commend you for sure. that and thank you. Which is, which is everyone. Yeah. Like anyone with an insecurity is everyone. It yeah. doesn't matter if you're Halle Berry, it doesn't matter if you're Beyonce, it doesn't matter if you're Tiwa Savage, it doesn't matter if you're Chris Brown. Yeah. Every single human being, because in the same way our physical health you're not telling me that people believe Chris Brown never has a cold, right? So mm. anyone who has physical ups and downs also have psychological ups and downs. Mm. So every single human being suffers from insecurity. Uh, just uh, one, th one thing I've, I've had experience, I mean, I've done musicals over the years as an actor, um, mm. quite a number from Sarafina, I think we're the third people to do it in the world after South Africa Broadway were the third people to do it. That's the theatrical script. Mm -hmm. And I think you also came to watch... Um, I was about to say, don't make me drop right now. I've seen you in your musical. Yeah, hey. oh, yeah so, 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 you see, <laughs> so you see me in Subira. Um, yeah. uh, Subira was one of the most difficult journeys that I had, with it being uh, a military show. And yeah. this, I, um, this has come really at the right time because for then I needed this and there's a connection between mental health how you see yourself and how you move and mm. one of the greatest lessons i learned then was to switch off no no don't lie drew was dancing like he was about to enter some form of staccata yeah <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> where is the proof i need proof <laughs> They don't believe that I can sing and dance, but um, <laughs> yeah, it was one of the difficult. No, he can. He can. Yeah, yeah, one of the difficult processes that I had to go through was uh, during that two-month period of rehearsal, uh, because mm. you know, as a dude, there's that thing, no, you are a six-pack, you know, yeah. and you talked about yeah. body goals and you being against it, and mm. I walked through that rehearsals trying to get a six-pack. I still remained with the one. So, <laughs> so I decided to use it as a prop. I used, I decided to use yeah. my weight as a prop, and uh, you know, have it that there is a beginning of the process as a trainer, as a trainee, to when I'm an ex expert soldier. So I was able to work into that. Now, 
or coming to I Love Me Too, uh, people mm. of my size and larger, uh, what do you have in store for us? <laughs> <laughs> I, I and I, I'm really happy that you asked that question because again, mm. it is a misunderstanding about mm. what health is. Yeah, I train people of all shapes and sizes, mm -hmm. and actually, what looks a certain way sometimes from the outside can mm. often have zero bearing on how fit someone is. Mm. So we often get um, people who are visibly very petite, mm -hmm. who struggle more than people who are visibly much bigger. Mm -hmm. So what I really try and do is move the conversation because what is weight or what is, um, what is aesthetics? Mm -hmm. When I mean weight, I mean the aesthetic part mm -hmm. of it, not the biological mm -hmm. part of it, the aesthetic mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of it. Because when people always say like six pack, it's only because society has told us that is the ideal. Mm. But there are many people who can walk past a gym and all of a sudden get a six pack just because genetically they happen to be inclined that way. Mm -hmm. And there are people who can train for months on end and really struggle because they have stubborn fats, they have lower metabolic rates, they mm -hmm. have all of these things that contribute to um, their body finding it harder to break down um, fats and turn it into muscle. Mm. So I think what we've become stagnated in is this idea that how you look must be one particular way and that one particular way corresponds to how fit you are. Mm. And that is just absolutely not true. Mm. There used to be a show in the UK called Super Size versus uh, Super Skinny. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is do a whole health background check on someone who was plus size mm. um, versus someone who was underweight. And mm. very often the person who was overweight was healthier than the person who was underweight. Their issues tended to be more things like portion control mm. or... Um, sporadic eating habits or whatever but when it came to doing and completing the workout when mm. it came to good calories in their bodies when it came to uh, diversity of diet often the bigger person was healthier so if there's anything that I really try and do and I always challenge my colleagues in the fitness industry mm -hmm. I okay if anyone follows me on my page okay of course you show off your body of course you do right yeah. but mm -hmm. I always try balance it with communication about behind the scenes sometimes I'm feeling low sometimes I'm feeling fatty sometimes mm. I can't be bothered to get up and I mm. always try and challenge my colleagues in the industry don't just show your six pack don't do that because it's actually very damaging mm. to the 95% of people who are put off from training because they feel that that's an unattainable goal unless you have like a particular activity like your show mm. where you have no choice but to engage in yeah. physical activity most people look at that and they're like, ah, that's for those people. Yeah. Me, let me just continue doing what I'm doing. And it should never be like that. Every right. size shape is welcome. Mm -hmm. One of my dancers is a size 20. And let me tell you something, she's one of the baddest dancers mm -hmm. that you're ever going to see in your yeah. life. Yeah. It's yeah. just about changing the narrative of mm -hmm. what is beauty mm -hmm. and, and giving people a space. Because I promise mm -hmm. you, when people feel good about themselves, naturally, mm -hmm. they become healthier. But when people feel badly about themselves, naturally they become unhealthier. So we just need to drop this six pack, uh, biceps, tricep. We need to drop that. And let's yeah. just talk about being happy, being comfortable in our skin. And naturally your body will end up in that direction. Outstanding. Right. Awesome. We are so excited as Icon Radio to be part of this amazing, amazing event. Um, we're also going to be live on location. And we're going to be yes, having sir. conversations around mental health and, of course, fitness. And dancing. And of dancing course. while we're there. <laughs> Excited. And, and Drew, twerking competition, did you know? Ha-ha, twerking competition <laughs> with Drew. You've heard it first here <laughs> on The Breakfast Jam. Uh, There's going to be a twerking Drew, competition with Drew. Drew, we want to see you twerk. <laughs> I want to see you twerk, man. Well, I've got, I've got enough flesh on me to twerk even my knees. I was so about I got to it. say, you got the assets, man. Some of us you are got dying for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got you. I got you. Before we let you go, please plug the event and let everybody know the details. I hear even there's a dress code. Let us know everything about I Love Me mm. Too. So, 3rd of September, Wama Restaurant. It starts at 10 a.m. English time, not 10 a.m. Kenyan time. <laughs> um, and there is going to be back to back instructors on the hour, every hour, mm. teaching different styles. So you're going to have Ioma teaching Afro Sassy, mm -hmm. Martina teaching, um, all teaching mm -hmm. piano. 
in the gym yeah, in yeah. the place. Mm-hmm. So talking about uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna have. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you just repeat the last bit. I think we dropped a bit of a connection there. We're gonna have Oscar Mwalo, who I think is one of Kenya's most recognized dancers, one of the directors of mm. Sarakazi, mm. teaching uh, Lingala and Afrobeat. Mm. It is a space where everyone is welcome. We don't care if you're the best dancer. We don't care if you're the worst dancer. Mm. Um, we don't, don't care if you love us or you're not there yet. Mm. The point is to come together. Um, and treat it like a space where we can all celebrate one another. We can all celebrate the music and that comes out of this continent um, and through open up conversations about mental wellness. Totally looking forward to it. I think. Boom. I, I Me think, too. We're going to teach you that choreo, man. Chicky, I think honestly should have charged more for this because what, what uh, guys are going to come out uh, gaining is more, it's worth more than this. So health also has an economic aspect to it. And I'm very aware that um, if you put particular price points on things, Mm. what you do is alienate sometimes people that need it the most. So what I try and always do is keep my stuff as affordable as possible so that Mm. we can get the people who really need the service. Mm -hmm. But that being said, last time we did sell out. So this time we intend on selling out again. So get your tickets early. You can come to my page. At Cheeky Kuruka, I'll be sending the link to Icon Radio so you can okay. go onto their page, click the link, um, and just buy via Hustle Sasa. Buy early, it will get sold out. Yeah, Amazing. so yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, do tag us, we'll be able to tag you as well and tag uh, on our posts uh, with my three followers and uh, Emma's, <laughs> Emma's 30,000. One, one, <laughs> one follower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but people get onto those sites. So um, uh, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate you, you taking your time. Uh, I don't know what time it is there. I know it's like one or two hours difference. It's the same. No, it's the same. Oh, great. Oh, All right. Awesome. awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we look forward to having you in studio with the Afterthought team and talking about more about this event and, of course, other aspects of dance and mental health. Thank you so much, Chiki. Enjoy your, time, you enjoy your time in Turkey. Bye. Bye. We will. Have a wonderful day. You too. Right, bye, bye. Bye. Outstanding. That was an amazing interview. And uh, we'll try and get the excerpts and try and load them up on our social media in case uh, you need someone who needs to listen to it. We'll be able to... Mm. No, but nowadays is no physical radios anymore. It's phones. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. so maybe in case someone was distracting you or you received a call during that time, yes. we'll be able to get that out for you on our socials at Icon Radio KE mm-hmm. on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So... That is I Love Me Too. That's going to be happening on the 3rd of September at Wama Restaurant. Advanced tickets. at uh, That's at 500 shillings. Bob. And you might not get Emma Gates, so... Yeah, you might not get Emma Gates, so... <laughs> Just buy them early. Buy them yeah. early, buy them early, buy them early.